Welcome back to Adam Sawatari Extreme. We're going to take a look at the coil setup on the 7 and also see if we can get the engine to turn over. The rotary god has given me some tips that I can pass on to you that will allow us to see what type of condition we're actually in. But let's start off with the coils. As you will recall, when I talked to all of you before, I run the factory setup, which is one primary coil and two trailing coils. You can see the setup right there. I have three tips that could possibly help you. And the first was taught to me from JC and actually has worked out on many different cars that I've tuned that have had a misfire, especially at high RPM. Now this setup works the best on the dyno because of combustion chamber pressure and the resistance, but it'll also work on a free rev when it gets bad enough. So if you run the car up to high RPM with the lights out, you'll be amazed what you can see. As clean as day, if the coils are given away, you will see everything light up. It looks like lightning, because where the case gives way, the spark will jump to the path of least resistance to the nearest grounding point, and that will tell you if you have an failure. That's typically the first thing that he always advised me to do. It's worked on tons of cars, not only the seven, on the NSX, it's something that might work for you. So I pass that on. Is something that I've learned. The second thing is, you can kind of see on that primary coil, that is dielectric grease. And when we were racing back east between the rounds, we actually had an issue where a coil, primary coil, was giving way. And I would typically change them every three races, but every now and then, it just wouldn't hold up. And in this particular race at ATCO, we did not have enough time for me to pull the manifold and change the coils. So, someone who races top fuel had once told me that if you ever get in a jam, take dielectric grease and basically surround the coil with it. That is why that's there. If you get into a jam and you need to make the next round, try putting dielectric grease around the coil completely. That actually allowed us to complete the race and win. I know it sounds insane. Some of you may know that already. Some may think it sounds ridiculous, but in any case, it worked for us. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is the igniter. The igniter in my car is actually inside the car, but when it was in the engine compartment, high-end miss. For the longest time, we couldn't figure out what it was. Even when we ran the eights, we were still having issues of this weird intermittent high-end miss. Well, eventually we figured out what it was, the igniter. Running an auxiliary isolated ground to the igniter fixed all the high-end miss problems. So, it was intermittent. I don't know if it'll help you, but that's something to think about. In any case, now what we want to do is we want to kind of go through the process of what we'll do to prepare to see if we can get the engine to turn over. The big question is, will the engine turn over? None of us know. In late night conversations, Abel and I have both theorized that maybe it will, maybe it won't. He thinks the engine is okay. I'm not sure, I can't remember if it was blown or not. So you can see there's a lot of unknowns going on here. But one thing we do know for sure is it has been sitting for a very long time. Therefore, I have to ask Abel what his thoughts are. And what he advised to do was take some sort of lubricant and spray it in the spark plug holes and let it sit overnight and then try and slowly turn it over. And if we have any seals that have become stuck, it is going to become very apparent. Luckily, as well, the injector is being removed. We can use the injector ports to also inject lubricant. Everyone has their own favorite. For me, I just like to use TriFlow, so we'll spray that in there. A few words of caution if you're gonna do this. One is, make sure the straw's in all the way and hold the straw while you're spraying. And you wanna move the straw around to get a good even distribution. But I'll say that one more time. If this straw goes in there, there's going to be a lot of work to get it out. So, I'll leave you with that. We'll start pulling the tape and see how it goes. Okay, I covered everything up to keep contaminants from getting in. We'll pull all the rags off before we pull the tape off, just because it's too much clutter to work with. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. We'll put them back on afterwards, okay? So everything is exposed. Now, you'll remember, we put the tape over the injector holes. So we'll pull that off. And I'll just stick it on me for now. One 
down below. All right. Now, as you can see, everything's exposed down there. All right. Now we'll get the can of Triflow. Shake it up a bit, like we talked about. One hand on the straw. Make sure I don't launch it in there. And then we'll just shoot it in the port. The circular motion, just like that. Okay. All right. Now, we'll cover up the ports again. Okay, now that we have everything closed up again, we'll go to the other side. I need to pull the spark plug so we can get to the combustion chambers. Okay, we're ready to pull the plug wires, then pull the plugs. That way we can spray the triflow into the combustion chamber to lubricate all the seals. So hopefully everything will work out okay. It's very difficult to see down there. I have my number one cameraman with me. He'll do the best he can so you can see, and I will explain what I'm doing as we go, okay? so. Down in the hole here, I'm going to pull the front leading plug wire and the trailing. To get to the rear housing, I've got to stick my arm underneath, pull the leading and the trailing. Now it's a little tight as you can imagine, so I'm going to try and get down there with the ratchet. and get the plugs loose so I can back them out by hand. We're on the leading. Let's see if I can get on. All right. Okay. Got the leading broken. All right. Now we'll go up to the trailing go for the rear housing. I won't use a small extension. Let me see if I can contort myself and get back there. Okay. Now, everything is open. So we can work our way in there with the tri-flow and get some lubricant in those combustion chambers to lubricate the seals. I'll just go grab the can real quick here. All right. Shake it up real good. All right, now let's go ahead and put the straw on. Make sure we're as good as on as we can. Clear the straw for any contaminants. All right, now let's see if we can get it down there. Okay, all right. Now, pull the can back up. All right, get the ugly light off. So the combustion chambers are lubricated. We're gonna let them sit overnight, and then tomorrow will be the day we'll check to see if the engine will turn over. So that'll be all for this time, and I'll see you next time. Just kidding. What we'll do is we'll just fast forward to the next day, and then we'll see if actually the engine will turn over. I wouldn't leave you hanging like that. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back to the next day. I've already pulled the spark plugs and I pulled the tape off the injector ports. This way we're ready for the moment of truth. As we look at everything, the first thing we need to do is mark the eccentric shaft pulley roughly 120 degrees because we sent lubrication on this side and this side and we need to get it on that area. So I'll go ahead and mark the crank pulley, just a rough estimate of about 120 degrees. This way I know when it's up on top, we need to lubricate through the injector ports for the last place. Now, 
to get ready for this, we need to turn the eccentric shaft very slowly and listen at the same time for any sort of scraping sound. And if we hear anything, then of course, as you know, that's bad news. That's probably a side seal or possibly a corner seal. And if we're turning it slowly with the ratchet and it stops, then we probably have an apex seal that's stuck. So let's see how it goes here. First thing I'm gonna try and do is get the ratchet onto the eccentric shaft. Okay, right there. And then as we turn, I have to take the stethoscope and I'll put it on the center iron so I can hear what's going on inside. I'll turn slowly. All right, that's good news. I don't feel a lot of resistance and I don't hear anything. Okay, that is exceptionally good news. Everything moved quite easy. We're a little bit past, but it's good enough. We'll take off the stethoscope, and like I was talking about, we want to lubricate again at that 120 degree mark. So, like I talked about before, we'll clear the straw first, make sure there's no contaminants. Secure the straw, it doesn't go in. Plenty of lubricant down there. Okay. And then, of course, we need to come in right here. Okay. All right. Now, Let's put the stethoscope back on, head back to the centric shaft. Okay. All right, we have our reference point there, so we know when that's all the way down. Put the stethoscope back in so I can listen inside the chambers. Okay, we made it back 360 degrees. Let's see if I can work this out without hitting anything. All right, well troops, good news. So, without any resistance, I didn't feel anything hanging up. So the only thing we'd have to be concerned about is an apex seal actually being stuck in the rotor. Nothing's 100% as you guys know, but I'm feeling pretty good about the side seal and corner seal situation because I didn't hear anything that would indicate that something's hanging up or dragging. So I think we should end on a good note. I will plug everything up, put the spark plugs back in, and we'll take it from there. 
I guess the next thing on the list would probably be to start flushing out the entire fuel system. So other than that, I'll see you next time.